Welcome to this radio channel and this is another video in our series on propagation. Understanding how shortwave propagation works. Understanding how you can listen to signals. We have uh, had multiple videos yet. And this is another one. And we'll talk about a special phenomenon that's called sporadic e-skip. Now, this series was inspired by something that I've seen on Facebook's uh, shortwave group. Um, somebody was mentioning that he was extremely surprised that late in the evening he could hear CB skip on channel 6, which is 27.025 megahertz. And he would expect that there would be no signals or only local signals on such a high frequency in the middle of the night, which usually is the case. But there's something called sporadic e skip, and that's one of the phenomenons that I love when it happens because it's just amazing what you can hear and what it can actually do. So basically, sporadic e skip is uh, simply a mode of propagation that happens as um, basically ionized patches and here they're represented by kind of what looks like a very very uh, pale cloud. Now these clouds basically um, just happen. Now you don't know when it can happen and that's the thing about sporadic e-skip. You don't know what it's going to happen, but you get hints, you know. Uh, for example, I know that if there's a weather front going through, I've noticed that uh, a very active weather front with many thunderstorms, very often in the path of that storm, there will be some sporadic e-skip clouds. Um, because it is probably, and I must say really probably, related to weather. It often happens more in the summer than in winter, but there are two periods where it's more intense. Now, once again, sporadic e-skip can happen anytime, at any hours of the day or night, but there are two periods where it's more intense. There's the summer period, which is um, May, June, July, and August. That zone has a lot of sporadic e-skip. I would say uh, July being the big sporadic e-skip e month of the year. And when that happens, you'll hear skip on very high frequencies, even in the middle of the night. I remember listening, for example, to FM amateur radio repeaters on 29660 from uh, the US Virgin Islands at midnight local time because of sporadic e-skip. Um, the other time period for that is December and January. And by the way, as I'm making this video, only 48 hours ago I heard sporadic e-skip. I was listening to um, Texas, Alabama, and New Mexico on 10 meter amateur radio band at uh, midnight, uh, only two days ago on, on Christmas, uh, on uh, not Christmas, but on New Year's Day. So it gives you an idea. And that's probably that time period where that uh, uh, comment on the uh, shortwave forum popped up. Somebody heard something. That means if you're in the middle of the night, don't decide that you don't listen to anything above 15 megahertz because there's nothing ever there. That is a big mistake. You need to tune all the frequency ranges all the time. And it doesn't matter <coughs> if it's not the best time because you never know what could happen. If sporadic e-skip pops up, you might hear stations on very high frequencies, amateur radio stations, CB stations, and so on. Sporadic e-skip also has another kind of another layer to it. If you are listening to higher frequencies, an amateur radio operator, for example, on 50 megahertz, sporadic e-skip, these clouds sometimes become so ionized that you can actually listen to a sporadic e-skip on 50 megahertz. And so that means that you can actually have stations from far away. And by the way, once again, 
on New Year's Day when Spartak Eskip showed up. I tuned 50 megahertz and actually heard a few stations that were very strong from Texas on 50.120 upper sideband. So uh, that gives you an idea that it can propagate signals very high in frequency. So high in fact that in the days of analog TV, I could, um, when Spartak Eskip was really strong, I could actually tune to channel 3 and 4 from stations very far away. I remember receiving on channel 4 a station in Alabama on my TV just with the little rabbit ears. So that shows you that in higher frequencies it can skip too. It can sometimes when it's very very ionized even skip FM stations. So you'll hear uh, for example in the lower FM band some very very far away FM station come in and out basically propagating like shortwave signals you know get stronger weaker stronger weaker. This is a very very unique propagation mode and um, it happens, like I said, at random. You can have sporadic e skip for you know no reason or no known reason, basically. And a sporadic e skip cloud can propagate, you know, anything from anywhere from you know a few hundred miles or kilometers to more than one, two thousand kilometers or miles away. And um, usually. Spartic Eskip is very specific on a zone. So, for example, on uh, January 1st, I heard Alabama, Texas, and New Mexico, which are states that are close together in the south of the United States. At other times, you'll hear stations from another region. Here, I'll hear, uh, I don't know, Ohio and all the states surrounding Ohio one evening because it is very, very localized. It is a small patch that is in the sky at a certain point, so it will give you propagation to only a specific region. So um, it is, you know, interesting to tune around the bands even when you think there's nothing on. That's how you're going to do your best DX. Tune the bands when there's nothing on and you'll be surprised what you can hear sometimes. So sporadic E, great phenomenon. It's something that uh, I really enjoy a lot. And of course in the tools, because I have a video with tools on how to see different things and how to know when you know different types of propagation happen. Um, basically, uh, these tools will help you um, learn more on when you know sporadic E ex uh, exists and so on. So sporadic E skip, another unusual but very interesting propagation uh, mode that exists for shortwave. If you enjoy my videos, why not subscribe? You'll be informed when new videos are online. Give us a thumbs up if you like the series and hope you enjoy this series on propagation for shortwave, learning more. Um, thanks for all the people that already left some great messages and telling me that they love the series and hope that you learn from this series.